Hi, Kevin Clegg from Wattmaster, here with Rob Lamb today. Rob's going to demonstrate how to install an Elko hazardous area steel wired cable gland in both the barrier and non-barrier form. It's interesting to note that the hazardous steel wired armoured cable glands from Wattmaster can be used for either a barrier or non-barrier application just with a slight adjustment to the product. The, it's also interesting to note that there's one approval number for hazardous non-barrier and hazardous barrier with the Elko steel wide cable glue. Well Rob will hand it over to you now and um, after this we should all be able to terminate a hazardous area cable glue correctly. Hello and welcome to our Elko tutorial on steel wire armoured cable and cable gland fitment. Basically steel wire armoured cable can be orange circular or XLP black sheathed cable which has a steel wire armour protection underneath the first sheath to protect the inside conductors and core and bedding from external damage. The steel wire armour in this case is required to be grounded so that if there is any damage to a cable in the field and it goes to the or shorts out to the steel wire armour it can be bonded through the body of the gland and grounded out in the enclosure. By design cable companies and cable manufacturing companies publish specification on their cable as to the diameter, the diameter of the individual uh, steel wire armours and the diameter of the bedding. These are all necessary to ensure that we select the right gland for the correct fitment of the cable in the hazardous location. With the particular cable that we have here, if we can view this cable, this is in fact two core and earth steel wire armoured. So technically we'll be talking about PVC steel wire armour and PVC is the way it normally reads in cable specification. In the manufacturing process, the difference between the OD or the overall diameter of our cable will differ from one end of the drum to the middle of the drum to the end of the drum and then in some cases over a number of drums in a batch. So whilst at specification we go to the job and we're expecting to encounter this cable, we need to check measure the as-built cable on site to ensure that we have selected the right gland or have the right gland to fit this cable. In this case, the overall dimensional OD or OA in some cable books of this cable indicates via these vernier calipers that we're a 15 millimetres OD. With regard to the steel wire armour, in this case we, it's a known cable um, we don't anticipate any problems in fitment. Sometimes when you put a gland on and it doesn't fit well, it is overlooked that the diameter of this steel wire armour can vary marginally and in some imported cables can be drastically different. As a check measure, we can also check the over bedding, the bedding being underneath the steel wire armour but over the cores. So the over bedding dimension in this case is 10 millimetres. There are a number of resources available either online, in print or in the Alco catalogue to help you with the fitment of these hazardous area glands. One thing that shouldn't be understated if you'd like to make reference to perhaps this hazardous area gland classification because we are in a hazardous area we want to ensure we're fitting the correct gland. A standard UW or AW gland is just unarmoured or armoured weatherproof. The prefix in the front of the gland we want to use should be H for hazardous area. In this case, steel wire armour. So you can see the HAW, when we look across this chart, we see yes in every box. And that refers to the suitability of IP rating, class of hazard, and the zones. In this case, HAW covers off all of these credentials. So ordinarily, we've already checked the dimension of our cable. We know that it can be up to plus or minus one or two mil difference in overall diameter. So that's why we've checked it. This is the uh, complete view of the gland. We've got the entry thread and lock nut and fibre washer. Fibre washer must be installed to ensure IP and EX rating. We are either going in using a tail nut depending at spec of EXE or EXD or threading into a flame path seal that might already be in the uh, motor starter enclosure etc um, as built. If we have a look at the cable now, we look at the different components. To achieve an IP seal from the external coming from the field, we need a compression seal on the overall diameter, 
which is achieved by the back nut and the seal that goes around the overall diameter. We have a sleeve then that's inserted over the cable and the function of the sleeve is to be able to be the receptacle for the overall diameter or OA seal and also internally to be able to bind up on the cone which provides tortuous path or trapping of the steel wire armour between the two cones. In this fashion we have an angle internal and external, one goes outside the steel wire armour, one goes inside the steel wire armour and we can see that if we close that up it's going to put a bite on our steel wire armour for earth binding and mechanical security. Because we can have damage outside in the field on the cable, it is possible that um, gaseous pressures or moisture can ingress past our overall diameter seal. So we also have to have a seal on the bedding or the last PVC cover over the conductors which are actually providing the, uh, the copper uh, to do our work to, for our, um, our power. So this is achieved by, in this case, the over bedding seal and then finally the gland body goes on, all of this cramps up together to provide seal, clamp and seal and our tail goes through to be terminated for the uh, particular application inside. Brand new out of the packet when we're using this as a HAW hazardous area um, steel wire armoured gland, standard fitment will come with this brass cone. This is for use with barrier compound or barrier putty. In this application, we disregard that and out of the packet, we will use this seal, which fits in the body. Whilst the exploded view that I've just shown you is in the reverse of this diagram, we can see a cutaway view of the gland with the steel armoured cable installed. We can see we have the OD, overall diameter of the, um, the cable. We can see here this brown area, which is the OD seal. We can also see that we've trimmed the steel wire armour and to a particular length which we will dwell on in detail later. There's no point having our length of steel wire armour stripped too long because it will mechanically bind up as we want it to but it will impact on the placement of this seal. We can see the bedding goes all the way through and here is our over bedding seal which is our second seal internal which is the last bastion, that's the last weatherproofing in EX seal as the bedding goes through. Our cable is stripped and our tail is in the enclosure now ready to be terminated to do work. The fibre washer is shown fitted. Please note that the fibre washer is fitted to the body of the gland external of an enclosure. It does not sit internal in front of the lock nut. This is your IP, IP and flame path seal. Needs to be external to the enclosure. Let's get into it. It's fair to say that on site you may not be in a workshop, you might be in a trench, you might be working under a switchboard. You don't always have the opportunity to have a workbench or a, a, a bend field or an Anacon device to hold your product for the purpose of keeping it nice and tidy so you can understand what it is I'm doing. Well, we will use this vice. What we need to establish is when we're going into an enclosure or a switchboard, we need to know how long the tail is going to be. We predetermine how long that will be before we make our cut. In this case, it'll be a little bit random. First thing we do is we need to not only cut the insulation, but also cut halfway through the steel wire armors by use of a hacksaw. It's a fairly technical thing. It's called guesswork, but we can guess that we haven't cut all the way through the steel wire armors. It's important to preserve the bedding underneath and always to preserve ultimately the insulation over the conductors of the cores. Okay, so now we've cut the steel wire armors most of the way through. Now we need to remove the sheath. So with use of a Jakari stripper, we clamp it over. And we remove the insulation. At this stage, it's advisable to wear eye protection because 
in removing the steel wire armour, you don't want these wires flicking around and getting in the face. But several wires at a time, we unfurl them and we work them so we actually break through and remove them. Got a straggler. I'll go for the side cutters. Once again, being careful not to nip the bedding. So there's the first stage. What we do need to do, we need to go back to our dimension E and measure the length of the steel wire we need to trim to be able to trim off the balance of the insulation so that when we put our cone outer clamping ring in our cone underneath, it's at the right dimension. As we've previously mentioned, dimension E, the length of the steel wire armour that is exposed away from the PVC outer sheath or overall diameter is very important. This dimension can be found in the cable gland table. If you have a look we're using ALC HOW20SB, it's a 20mm entry thread. Move right across to exposed length of steel wire armour dimension E and we can see it's 10.5mm. Using a measure or these calipers, we're not talking about the exposed length of insulation that's left after we've manipulated our cable, but right from the end of the steel wire armors. So if we look at 11 mils, 10 and a half, 11 mil, work with the cable knife from underneath, rolling the cable on top to reduce the risk of injury. and then pairing off the balance. Now we've got our exposed steel armour length correct. We know that we're going to leave the bedding on there for at least the length of the cable gland for it to exit the cable gland inside the enclosure. So in this case we'll Carefully trim the bedding, ensuring we don't cut all the way through. We need to preserve the insulation on the outside of the conductors or the cores inside. There will also be a protective raffia inside, which is the wrapping around the cores to keep them bundled in the manufacturing process prior to the bedding being put on. 